So I wanted to show you a few things about my my trip. Uh, we we just spent two weeks over in Africa on a soul safari with William Whitecloud and and his crew, and it was really 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 amazing. Uh, basically, the the last five days we're at the Kruger National Park out there with the all the big five and and the rest of the the animals. And before that, we we went we workshopped and we you know we went in and spent time with some of the locals. But I wanted to share some things and some learnings uh, about you know what I took away from it. Uh, and so I, first off, I want to show you just just how incredible it is and what a creation it was and how close you get to the animals. So this is a uh, this is probably my best video uh, of this amazing lioness walking right past us, and and you can see the blood on her. It was um, she had just made a kill, and it was incredible to be so close. Now the reason why I'm showing you uh, this video, and, I, and I'll, I'll show you a bunch of other things is I want you just to see how close uh, we are, you know, to her. It, it blew me away when you go out there, just how close you get to these wild animals, and they're completely wild. And so this is my first point. It's, it's so fascinating. So I don't know, if you if you haven't been out there on a safari, it's crazy just how close that you get to these, these animals. And uh, just seeing them in their natural environment, you know, completely in a, you know no cages no fences just just out there it's um it, it's it's literally wild <laughs> it's literally wild and it was a, a total trip of a lifetime so i want to share a few more with you uh if that's okay i won't i won't share too much but there's a big point to it uh of some of the some of the cool things we got to catch up with out there so where is one of them that i wanted to show you look at this guy this guy is just absolutely massive. Uh, this rhino, he's um, he's nuts. Here's us. We're literally, I don't know, ten meters from him, and he is just staring at us. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I don't know. He is so big. And they actually told us that a week a week before this, they had a, a problem because uh, you know one of the one of the rhinos charged. Uh, which is, you know, not what you want. So here's Harriet. I uh, taken a. I think I took this photo, and these lions are just sleeping here, and they're, they're maybe three meters away from us, which um, is crazy. This here is us following uh, a cheetah, and this was a. Re I've got a good point about this that I want to bring um, forward to you as well because it was really interesting um what happened there anyway so let me um jump back to you guys for a second so how many of you were a little bit surprised when you see that about how close we can get to the animals you know, i was i was completely blown away now this is a it's a really interesting point actually so what they what the what they told us is the animals uh don't see us as a threat and don't see us as food. Uh, they they don't see us as a threat and they don't see us as food. We're just some big conglomerate thing uh, that's bigger than them, that doesn't ever interfere with them. They've never hunted it. It just, uh, one of the guides said, it's like we're just a moving tree. It's like we're a moving tree. But they said, if we get off the, the Jeep, and they can see that we are not part of this big Jeep thing, they'll go for us straight away. And so we were following, or we were right next to these animals, and because it wasn't a threat, and because it wasn't food, they completely delete us. And, and what's interesting about this is our consciousness ability to delete what's not important right like if you think about that the the, the our unconscious deletes what's not important so if you go back if i show you this and, and i want you to get this is you delete what's not important so so here's this lioness right and and she and her group are just uh ripping apart this buffalo and they spent all day trying to find food. She doesn't see that right here is a whole snack waiting because the lioness has never been able to distinguish that, that this has actually got food on it. 
It just to them is just one big thing. Apparently, it the 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 animals don't even know that there are individual animals there. It just looks like one big thing. Isn't that interesting? So so we would go right up to them and we'd be within five meters of these you know completely wild animals that look right at you and not see it. And I and I think we do that a lot in life, like our unconscious. It's deleting what's obvious. It's not in reality. Like reality is right there, but we're deleting it through our assumptions. We have assumptions that take what is real and what is there, and, and we're, we're putting these assumptions into the world, right? We are, and, and we only see what we assume is true. Because our unconscious has to know how the world is, right? Like if you think about it, it, it if, if we were to wake up the next day and all of a sudden our assumptions were completely untrue, how disorienting would that be? Right? How disorienting is that? If if you woke up the next day and suddenly like um you 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 couldn't speak this language anymore, or um there was no such thing as money, or you know, the, whatever it is, or you were just a, a foot taller, or you know, uh you, like it just just completely disorienting. We we don't actually want that. And and so what happens is when we're when we're creating these assumptions, it's the the present moment that we keep stepping into again and again and again and again, right? And as we we step into the next moment, we're basing what it is that's possible on what we've already experienced. And, and, and so we look for it. And so these animals have had Jeeps go past them for their whole life, right? They're in the Kruger National Park, which is massive, by the way. It's a million uh, square miles. A mi uh, sorry, it's bigger. It's a million square hectares. It's just insane. It's one and a half Europe's. And they've got a fence around the outside of it. So it's not really... And, and so they have an assumption that what's that that jeep is not food but the, the the ranger told me that about two weeks ago somebody didn't listen and they stood up and there was two cheetahs mating and so the, this um this viewer stood up thinking they're too busy mating they're not interested in him but as soon as he stood up apparently the the female cheetah could Set, see that that was no longer the same shape that they used to seeing, and they stopped what they were doing, and this cheetah just went for him, completely went for him, and uh, unfortunately they they had to they had to shoot the the poor animal, and um, the animal didn't die, but it but it's you know was severely injured, and so you know that was very upsetting to these people because um because that's not what they want so he was saying you cannot say i just thought that was an incredible incredible um you know i just thought it was just such an incredible thing and so here's the takeaway for you you you're, you're living in your assumptions you're living in your assumptions your assumptions are creating your reality and this is why you consistently find the same thing. You're not actually seeing the truth. You're consistently finding that it's hard to make money or that, uh, you, you know, that it's, it's difficult to lose weight or that, uh, that there's something you need to fix about yourself. You're consistently finding that, but it's not actually reality. It's not reality. It's, it's your unconscious assumptions. And our unconscious isn't that different um, from these animals, really. And I, and I thought that was that was really cool. So the the next the next thing that I really want to point out that I think was um, is is useful. I just want to find it. Uh, is we tracked uh, this this cheetah for for a really long time. And I mean, like we were following here. I'll just share my share my video, and we were tracking this this beautiful 
this beautiful creature. And we're just following it and when, and it would turn around and look at us and we were maybe three or four meters behind it. I think at one point it walked past us and the tail even touched us. And it's out there hunting um, for food. And what was so cool about being with this animal is just it's pure 100% focus. And so here's this group of monkeys, right? These, these sapiens, uh, you know, driving behind it. Its assumption is that's not important. It, even though we're there, you know, uh, being annoying, that wasn't important to it. And you should have just seen this focus. And it was for half an hour, just complete focus. Nothing else mattered. And, and I was doing some um, intuition work where, you, you know, you go into the, the feeling of something else. And I was really being with this animal, just like being with it as it was focused. And it was, it was quite interesting because coming back from this uh, safari where I'm out there and there was no Wi-Fi and no internet and no distraction, I come back and straight away my phone lights up and I'm met with all of this other shit that I'm just not worried about, you know, that, that I can't influence. And it's, it's all there. It's, it, it, there's so much noise. When you get away from it all and you come back, you realize just how much noise there is and how many people are, oh, what does this person think of me? And what does that person think of me? And, and, and uh, you know, how do I, and we, we're so distracted. We are so freaking distracted. And so I want to bring that energy um, back to you is that we are so distracted, but the thing that we're most distracted with is other humans, other humans, where we fit with them, what it is that they think about us and, and all of this. And by, by that distraction, uh, we take our energy, so we have this conscious energy, and we only have so much, and we place so much of it on things that we actually can't influence. We actually can't influence. Like, there's no point knowing about it. You know, can I do something about it? No. Okay. Well, what what is it to do? And and you you come back, and there's you you know you get bombarded with so much stuff, so much stuff. You know, there's a there's so much bad things happening. There's the media, there's, there's inflation, there's costs, there's all of this stuff. And you just can't do anything about, you know, 85, 90% of it, right? It's like, it, it, and it's all there to just, just distract you and play on your emotions. And I just loved tuning into that animal that was just so dead focused right on what it wants. Okay, here's the next thing that I absolutely loved was, Every single animal is living 100% true to its nature. 100% true to its nature. Meaning the lioness is just ripping that buffalo apart because that's what lionesses do. And, and the giraffe is just eating food and doing what it's doing, right? And the zebras are being zebras. And they're not trying to be or do anything else. You know, the, 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 the leopard is, um, the, we saw a lot of leopards. The leopard is a really, you know, amazing animal, but it's, it's nowhere near as good as killing as the lion. The lion has about a 40% success rate, but the hyena is actually the winner. The hyena has an 80% success rate. But, but here's what was um, interesting is they have no concern about what the others are good at. You know, they're not trying like there's no lioness thinking, oh, I'm just going to go be vegetarian. Right. There's no uh, there's no giraffe going oh, Maybe I'll just try to hunt like a lion. They're just not doing that. They're just in the being themselves. Right, like completely, like this is who I am and what I do, and maybe I'm just a cheater, and I'm not as you know, I'm just I'm just a leopard rather, and I'm not as good at hunting as the lion, uh, and I, and the lion's like, well, I'm actually you know, everyone thinks I'm really good at hunting, but I'm I, I'm nowhere near as good as the uh, as the hyena. By the way, the hyena is actually epic. It got some pretty bad marketing from the Lion King, uh, but the hyena is totally epic. But here's what I want you to get is um, 
we just get to be ourselves unapologetically being that and 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 we don't need to go and try to be anyone else and i know that sounds um you know obvious but but just because you see someone else that has a superpower you can't admire it without trying to go and copy that i think finding your own genius which obviously i talk about a lot in the book uh by the way and so i hope you guys do read it but finding your own genius and knowing that's yours and uh, there's no really any there's no way to compare it to, to anything else live completely true to your nature if you uh you know orient to the perfectionist go and find a way uh, where that genius can be used to its highest ability if if you have the you know the number eight that loves control loves a challenge go find a way to use that you know we don't need to try to take that and put it somewhere else find a way to use your superpower to its highest potential you know uh, something that was really obvious to me is as i i uh, uh, assume and feel most connected to the third orientation uh, in the book and i know that the third orientation on one side of it can be very destructive it can it can lie and it can pretend that it's you know much more impressive than it really is like the third orientation is is uh it's it's shadow is uh trying to be impressive to others but on the high side when you actually have something that is impressive then the number three orientation gets to shine right like the the, the number one orientation shadow is so critical and judgmental and you know it, it, everything needs fixing that's its shadow but on the high side creates beauty and has integrity and has morals does that make sense everyone and and so finding your true nature and just accepting it and realizing on the other side of your shadow is your genius you know like if, if you uh, orient to the ninth orientation right and, and and you're the nine on your shadow your 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 shadow is like your your wounding is that you're a nobody right oh i don't need anything but on the high side is you have the ability to fit in with anyone. You know, you, you get groups to be harmonious and get people to get along. And finding a way to let that shine, I think is so important. See, the the, the crocodile and the hippo aren't trying to go and chase things on the, uh, uh, you know, out on the plains, right? They're not. The, uh, there's, there's birds that completely survive just living on the back um, of the wildebeest and, and just taking, just eating all the ticks off the wildebeest. That's all they do is they just sit on it and eat it. And that's, that's their thing. They're not trying to change. They're not trying to change, you know, all, all the herbivores, uh, you know, hang out in big packs and, and get along and, and the carnivores are mainly uh, on their own hunting. And that's what they do. Right. And so I wanted to share that with you is that, you have a genius and it's on the other side of your shadow and the way that you think you're broken is actually the way that you're powerful the way that you think you are broken is actually the way that you're powerful when you just allow yourself to step through the shadow what is dysfunctional is actually your highest calling does that make sense it's your highest it's on the other side of it if you orient to the number two and you're always people pleasing and trying to help everyone else stop trying to be different and just find a way to use that to your highest ability right like find a way to use it like if you love helping you know, and, and making others feel good, find a way that you get to shine in that. And don't, don't hide from it. Don't think it's bad. Oh, I'm always, you know, you, you always find the people pleaser and, and they're always feeling like everyone else is, you know, out to get them and they're giving energy to everyone else and they're never appreciated, you know, and they help everyone else and no one helps them, blah, blah, blah. Just get over yourself and realize that you do love to help people and find a way to shine, right? 
<laughs> See, to, ju to just stick with this point a little bit more, it seems to me that most of us are still trying to figure out how we need to be so that we can be successful. You know, we're still trying and in an assumption that there's a way we need to be in order to finally be successful. Like, oh, I just need to meditate more. Oh, I just need to change my diet. Or, oh, I should just be more disciplined. Or, oh, I should be this or this or this, right? Like, I should just be like, I should just have a little bit less, you know, uh, fat on my body oh i should just be a little bit you know i just need to be a little bit more that is it true like most of us are so in this idea that we're figuring out how we need to be and that was a very useful belief at some point in our life how should i be in order to be successful but but bluntly it's childish right it's childish because a, a child is trying to figure out how to be right how should i be what, what what do i need to do to fit in what do i need to do to be successful what do i and, and so it's actually a childish desire to to finally be right and be complete and be a grown-up and be right and so the, the the final point that I just want to make that that really that I sat with is that uh, we need to stop trying to figure out how to be and be you just create what you love. This trying to how should I be? How should I be? How should I be? Is just noise. It's just a rattle. You know, be you like however you are. That's that's fantastic. And the less you try to change it, oh, I should just be more positive or I should just be more that it's like, just be you, right? If you're not super positive all the time, trying to be positive is just lying to yourself and being inauthentic. Just sit with you and, and, and sit with that feeling of this is me and, and all the, uh, the pain that's with that. Because see, when we actually say this is who I am, uh, many aspects of that is painful. I wish this was different. I wish I had a different childhood. Or I wish I had that. Or I wish I had this. And it's like, just sit with it. Sit with the pain. Because when you sit with it, this is who I am. And you stop trying to change it. This is the first time you can fully go, what would I like to create? without trying to recode it all away and, uh, you know, change this and, and be more disciplined or, or be more successful and just, just, just accept who you are and accept that, that's who I am. And then ask yourself that big question, and so what would I love to create? Being who I am, what would I love to create? And, and my friends, like, to me, this was just so freaking obvious that, so many of us, even if you've been in magnetic mind for a while, is that we're still trying to figure out what it is we need to change or fix or learn or do different so that we can finally be successful. We can finally be it. And so the answer is you already are. So anyway, uh, in, in summary, I had a really great uh, vacation. And uh, and I'm so grateful to be back and and uh, sharing all of this with you. It was just um, yeah, it was just so so good. It was so good, so 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 good. So with all that being said, uh, let's let's do some let's do some work, huh? Let's do some work. Let's let's get ourselves into our creative orientation and and do that. So the first thing I want to make sure that everyone has, um, has this is you must have choices. You must have choices. 
So when I came back, I did a big completion process with myself and, you know, acknowledged all the things that I completed, uh, all that I had learned, and also uh, all that I'm, you know, am done with. And then I said, what am I going to create next? What am I going to create next? So you must have choices. I've chosen eight choices that I am that are just so awesome and incredible and going to be so much fun to create for me. And my question to all of you, and you don't have to answer it in the chat box, uh, but do you have a list of things you are committed to creating? Like really, and, you, and, and do you have that? Because this is the first step. I see a few people um, typing in the um, chat box. I don't mind if you, you're writing it or not. It's for you to answer. But if you don't have choices, if you don't have what it is that you're going to create, you're not living this work. You're, you're just, you're not. You're, all you're doing is, uh, is, is just living in a default position and you're just going to find yourself uh, pulled by other people's uh, and other entities and other uh, uh, communities and societies and groups by their their choices. See, you're a moving energy. You have to move somewhere. Either you're setting the end result that you're going for, that you're going to create, and your intention with those. You're saying that's what I'm going to create, and that's my intention. Or you're doing something else. You cannot be in both the creative structure uh, and the problem solving structure at the same time. Uh, a lot of times what happens is people will create things and then they stop, right? They create, they tick some things off, then they stop. It was actually that they were in a negative vision and uh, they were only doing those things to, you know, to resolve some internal conflict. Okay, so so have choices, have them, and and know that the choices don't really matter. But by having choices that you're going for, they will evolve your consciousness into. Uh, a being, a person, an individual that can then accept those choices into their reality. If you don't have choices, you are guaranteed to be resolving a part of your unconscious wounding. You just are. And you, you watch, you, I watch it all the time, is that, that people, um, they... They just don't have choices. <laughs> There's another way to say it. They don't actually have choices. They have uh, they have some some wishes. They have some goals. They have uh, they have things, um, or they just have you know uh, negative visions, right? And, and negative visions are where you're just creating things uh, because. Yeah, because you think you um, you have to. And actually, uh, if you remember from my first book, feels good to say that, by the way. From my first book, I've actually just started on my third book. But in my first book, I talk about uh, some of the things that we do uh, that are, are not um, not not right when we're when we need to be creating choices. Gosh, this is a good book. I should reread it. Actually, flicking through it, where where is uh, the focuses? True choices starts on page 185. Okay. So 
first the first um way that we do uh that keep us from a true choice okay is that uh we're resolving a negative belief okay and so instead of having something we want to go for what we've written down or lack of writing something down is resolving a negative belief right like uh it, it's it's all about just helping others or it's all about um being perfect or it's all about yeah, avoiding pain okay and, and so you know as an example um somebody who feels they're not worthy all their goals will be about others right or, or somebody that feels about being insignificant they'll just have one flavor of goals or if they you know they'll they'll just think that there's something that they need to dominate so they'll all of their goals will be about how they need to be another way that we 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 really do mess up our choices is that um, we're in reaction and uh, the only things that we have that we're going for are based off what we don't want and so i want you to look at your choices is there any that are there and they're actually only there based off what you don't want you know like you you, you don't want this so you're going for that and that's complete reaction and reaction um, doesn't work out because uh, as soon as you get a little bit away from your choices, uh, sorry, away from the pain, then you, you just have to keep going and, uh, and create more pain. The next is limitation, is that we create choices with a limit. And the next is uh, uh, others' opinions. So we don't have the things we want. All of our choices are based on what we think others will, will think of them. The next is um, control is that instead of what we want, the choices uh, as we think it has to be. The next is indirectness. Now, this is a big one. A lot of people go indirect, indirect. They Instead of saying, this is what I want, they go for something else, thinking if they get that other thing, then they'll get what they really want. And they always miss it. They always miss it. Uh, and the, the last one is default. Uh, default is where a, a person um, doesn't have, have any choices. They think that what they've got is enough. This is enough. And so they have one or two choices. Uh, this is enough. And it's very easy when you've been in this work, right? And you have been focused. It's very easy for you to feel that I've uh, I've achieved enough, you know, or uh, or I don't really know what I want to go for. It's very easy to find this place of, well, I did that and did that and did that. Gosh, that was everything I once dreamed of. So you stop. Is anyone out there? Is it just me? Is there anyone out there that's ever faced that? Where right? You go, well, now what? And like, uh, you know, some will say, hey, but you know, uh, my only goal is to be happy. It's like, well, duh. That, uh, that's easy though. Now, you know, what we're here to do is to create. Surely there's some, some more ways to create magic and to go for things. Makes sense? So, so, when I when I was out there and I was sitting there and I thought, you know what? I'm so grateful for everything I have now. I'm completely satisfied. If nothing changes, this, you know, this is just this is just amazing and magic. But what is it that I want to create? What would be uh, an exciting and fun adventure to go on? And so, so I have, so I've gone and written them again. And I really do compel you uh, to ensure that you just have set down, written and committed a list of things that you are actively engaged in creating. And, and by being actively engaged in creating, you have to let go of who you've been and evolve. Does that make sense? You have to evolve. So to finish off this so we can get into to recode is your choices are points of evolution. Right? 
its points of evolution is that the the most spiritual thing you can be is have a human experience most of the time you're on a journey to the next uh the next thing you're creating right it's very small amount of time you reach the the, the top of the mountain most of the time you're on some journey and by having to create what your heart wants wherever these desires come from they are there for you to act as the creator whatever that means to you of how your heart wants the world to be and as you put that focus out there you have to let go or evolve and remove limits and learn new things and, and you have to step into the new you. And that's actually what they're there for. That's actually what they're there for, is they're there for you to become your fullest expression, right? Does that make sense? Like that, they're, they're, they're there for you to evolve. Like they're there, yeah, sure, you'll, you'll create the thing you wanna create or write the book or, you know, uh, uh, go, you know, cause, cause the thing that was really obvious and, and uh, is that as I went to this holiday, right? I ticked off three massive things. Two of them you know about. One is a holiday and the second is I wrote the book. There was a third thing, which, which I'll share with you at another point. These three massive goals, I like, ticked those off. And it's like, wow, those, those are there, that's done. And I was like, sitting going, look at the person I had to become, you know, to write a fiction uh, story or to, uh, to be able to go away for two and a half weeks and have, you know, a hundred plus person organization work without me you know and, and coaches teaching this amazing content like i was like holy crap i was like when did that happen right when the fuck did that happen and it was like because i set those choices and had to and had to go for it and so be courageous enough to go for what your heart wants. Hey, you know, be courageous enough uh, to, to stand on that, that, that edge and go, you know what? Everything I've got now is fantastic and I'm so content and so happy and I'm going to go on an adventure. And I'm going to go on an adventure creating that and I have no idea how I'm going to be, be able to do it uh you know i'm not i'm going to create the marriage of my dreams i don't know how i'm going to uh you know start this business or i don't know how i'm going to move to a new country i have no idea because as you go into that place of not knowing that's when your genius can emerge right like it's you, your choices you you shouldn't know how to do them you know what I like? I know I'm like, oh, you shouldn't really know how to do that because if you already know how to do it, they're not really expanded choices. They're things you already know, right? And you shouldn't really know how the heck, you know, how am I going to recreate my body shape into a different body? How, the, how am I going to do that? I don't know how I'm going to start a chair. I don't know. But I know that if I commit to it, that tension will pull in genius insights and invention and knowledge and people. That vacuum between what I want to create and where I am now, that, that place of nothingness, of not knowing, has to pull in what it is that I need, people, resources, time, money, to be able to do it. And as it pulls that in, you, you know, follow the breadcrumbs or, you know, like Mike and Vance talk about, you turn the lights on, you see the, the next part of the highway and uh, it allows you to go there. Yeah. By the way, you have to get this book. I'm going to start talking about it a lot in these sessions. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> 